Hey guys, this is Tony with Backwoods Biker Magazine and Wood Tramp Outdoors. Uh, Jason from Vail, Colorado uh, wrote and asked me to give a detailed description of bush butter. What it is and how it can be used. Hang tight. Welcome back. Uh, actually, Jason is not the uh, only one that has written us, uh, you know, because I haven't done a lot of detailed uh, articles or um, videos on what bush butter is and all that. So just let me get right into it right away here. Can I take a sip of coffee here just one time? Mm hmm. Man, that is good. Yeah. So, anyway, let me give you the background on what bush butter is, okay? Um, first of all, whenever you purchase bush butter, it comes in a little satchel like this with the Wood Tramp uh, gear logo that is on it. Wood Tramp Outdoors and Wood Tramp gear. Uh, and it looks like pads of, of butter, exactly what it looks like, because we do it in molds that looks like butter, right? Like a, like a big pad. You can see how big that is. All right, and we ship it wrapped up in wax paper to keep it from sticking together just as a convenience. It isn't going to hurt it, but, you know, and <clears throat> it comes like this. Dink, right? And after you use it a while and keep it in your backpack and take it out in the bush with you, your satchel is going to end up looking like this, and at some point you'll wear off that guy, I think. This may not even have a, had our logo on it. I don't think it did, but I mean, you can see. <clears throat> and um, after you use it for a while, this is what it looks like. All right, there's a brand new pad. And this is a used pad. And then we got this remnant of a pad. And this, this goes a long way. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a real in-depth demonstration today so you know exactly what this is. So... I'm just going to stick this back in here, and I'll leave that one out. So, what is bush butter? The way that I um, like to explain what it is, it's a new generation type of fix and wax. It's in that category, but it's much more than fix and wax. But just keep that kind of in your wheelhouse there. Bush butter has evolved uh, to what it is today. Uh, my family arrived here uh, from uh, the Bern Lake region of Switzerland in 17, in the, or let's just say early 1700s, 1726, somewhere around there. Uh, and everything that they did in Switzerland was evolved around that lake, which means that they were fishermen, they were woodsmen, they were craftsmen, they were farmers. Uh, and, and all of those, they had to know survival skills. They had to develop uh, different ways to be able to uh, survive. Uh, and one of the things, one of the formulas that they brought here to the United States, before it was the United States, um, was a product that my father taught me how to make, which was called um, gear grease. That's how he referred to it. And I don't know if that's what they call it throughout the years, but... His father taught him how to make it. His father taught him how to make it. His father taught him how to make it. You know, my great, 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 great grandfather going way, way back. You know, and it's always been passed off down the years. And the way it was made back then uh, was with animal fat, whether it was bear fat, beaver tallow. You get the idea. Uh, and they incorporated um, uh, beeswax with it. Um, pine... Uh, sap, um, just, uh, let me see, one, two, three, uh, and there was a fourth ingredient that I can't remember right now, uh, but it was very uh, useful on all types of gear, um, and it was very successful, it was a great product, um, and, you know, it wasn't just my family that used it. Everybody used it back then that came from that area, from what I understand. But my family happened just to pass it on down, and I have not seen it uh, any other way. 
and I made it with my dad um, when I was a, a young lad. And I think the last time that I probably made it using that formula is when I was in my mid to late teens, um, getting ready to go on a hunting trip. Um, and again, it, it worked just as well back then as it did back in the early 1700s. But the problem with the bear, or excuse me, the gear grease was that in the summertime, because of the fat and the tallow, it would grow rancid. Uh, and you know you get flies sometimes you had maggots it depends on how long you left it in there um, and it attracted you know animals predators so you had to be careful with it and um, <clears throat> several years ago someone asked me what what was the best thing uh, to use to put on gear and they asked me how to make uh, a fix and wax and you know we we came up with this new formula that that took the um, animal fat out and we replaced it with uh, different natural in the bush type of products that you can use and that's what you have here today and the physical difference in it is that this is a little more pliable uh, and it does not grow rancid and I think it actually uh, lasts quite a bit longer and I can tell you, it definitely has many more uses than the gear grease ever, ever had. You know, so that's where it came from. Uh, and then we developed it into this, and this is what we make today. And we make this in small batches. We don't, we don't make, you know, 10,000 uh, pads of, of butter. You know, we're talking, uh, you know, a few hundred at a time. Uh, and that's why when you go on the website, if you order it, uh, it sometimes ends up being on back order, you know, because we just sell it. If if we put out a hundred satchels, uh, it doesn't take long for us to sell those satchels because people are, are wanting them. If we happen to take them to a, a show or a class, uh, we sell a lot of these at classes. I mean, they're just they're gone like that because of the amount of uses. And if you're watching this and you've used bush butter, uh, do me a favor and put a comment down there and tell me what you think. Be honest. If you think it sucks, just say it sucks. But if you think it's good, uh, say so and you know tell us what you used it on. So, what can you use it for? What? Uh, how is it practical? Well, I'm going to go over this list and then I'm just going to show you some stuff. And this is a very short list. Uh, we just, you know, we ran out of thinking of things and all of these uh, might even be subcategories that you could find. Like the first one, this is gear maintenance. The first one up there says all zippers. Well, I mean, every zipper that you can imagine, you know, whether it's a tent zipper or a coat zipper or a fly zipper, whatever it is, a zipper. I mean, you can use them on zippers. Uh, this is gear maintenance again. Tent seams to help uh, waterproof those seams. You can use it on all leather, uh, on all wax canvas, you know, if your uh, canvas pack or something starts to lose its ability to shed water, bush butter is great for that. Uh, all backpack seams, cordage, and I'll show you that, steel threads, hinges, um, boot care of all kinds, a glove conditioner, and on all your pots and pans that you don't want to, to rust or get funky on the outside. You don't want to put it on the inside. Although you could, it's not going to hurt you. Uh, you could eat this stuff and it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you. Uh, but um, I recommend on the outside. Uh, for tool maintenance, wooden handles, knife blades, axe blades, leather sheaths, micarta scales, uh, saw blades, tent stakes, hinge points. Weapons maintenance, gun stocks, gun barrels, long rifle parts, lowers and uppers, trigger systems, crossbow triggers, crossbow rails, arrow fletching, bow strings, magazine and receivers, bow cams, uh, arrow biscuits, holsters and belts, personal hygiene and first aid, insect bites, chapped lips, uh, cracked skin, you can use it for a beard balm, mustache wax on your calluses, dry scalp, dry skin, a hand conditioner, and a hair conditioner. Uh, for survival uses, uh, fire extender, fire starter, uh, carabiner lubricant, that's just a few of them there. For fishing gear, uh, Put it on your reel gears, your rod eyes, your braided line hooks. Uh, it's good for bell grease. Uh, use it on all cork handles and synthetic handles. <clears throat> and then general uses. 
Uh, you can use it on battery posts to keep it from corroding, electrical connections, door hinges, springs, latches, drawer slides, wheel bearings, chainsaw blades, um, and uh, we even got down on here a bench vice protected. Uh, one of our uh, users um, actually called us on the phone and said, hey, look, you know, I, I did something with this on an old vice that was really rusty, cleaned off the rust a year ago and put the bush butter on it and the rust never returned. You know, anything that's still like that. So that's, that's what we got written down. And, but there is literally hundreds of stuff that people have used this for that we don't even know uh, or we just, you know, haven't written them down whenever they would write us. Now, I just want to give you some practical applications here. I, I said that um, zippers was one of them. I just got this bag in from Camp Craft Outdoors. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm not intending to do a plug for any company that's out here today. Uh, but I got to tell you, Camp Craft Outdoors makes some of the best wax canvas products that I've ever had in my hand. Uh, and this just happens to be a, a, a ditty bag. Um, and because of the quality of it, everybody sells um, bags. But, you know, this guy happens to put together one of the best ones I've ever, ever seen. Best products we've seen is wax canvas. But the zipper on this thing has never been treated because we just got this in. So what I do with zippers is I just run that butter all along there like that. Yeah, just like that. And embed it in there, and it emulsifies from the friction of your hand and the actual zipper itself. And then you just, you know, work it in. And now it will repel water, and it will help this zipper to move right along. Right? And uh, there are very few seams on here, but I mean, if we're talking seams... I would just put it right there on that seam. I don't think that's a seam. No, that's not a seam. That's a seam, though. But, I mean, you know, he hides that so you really can't see it. It's not going to have that much trouble. But that's how I use it on zippers, like that. Uh, next thing I have right here is um, a haversack that came from uh, Pathfinder. Uh, let me see. SRO. Yeah, from Dave Canterbury's website. Uh, but, you know, I got to tell you, we were really disappointed in this. Um, you can see through that, dude, man. It was supposed to have been a wax canvas haversack. We're, we're doing an article, a special article on haversacks. Uh, and we thought, hey, you know, let's, let's pick up one of Canterbury, see what it looks like. And, you know, um, wax canvas is what we were looking at. This really sucks. Uh, so what we are, are doing is we're just going to take this bush butter and we're just going to put it on just like this. All the way across this is what we're going to do. We're going to go up and down all the seams like this and then work it in with our hand. Now, if you're in the field, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to put it all in your hand and, and this melts the wax. You really, I don't know if you can see the difference in the sheen or not from here to here. Uh, but it melts down, it emulsifies, and it becomes a part of the fabric, and it will actually shed water, you know, because as it cools off, it begins to get hard. Putting it on those seams there, to make sure the seams are waterproof, because you can see the holes in this thing here. You know, I, I think this is just his budget bag. He's got one made out of oil skin. You know, which would obviously be better than this here. But we were doing canvas. That's why we got this one here, you know. But we do that. You know, you if your canvas has, your wax canvas has lost its ability to shed water, bush butter will help you out. Okay. Um, another thing here. Here's a, here's a, a leather field strop. Okay. Um, on one side, you know, you put compound, stropping compound. And then on your smooth side, you put some type of, of oil. And what we do, because of the oils that are inside of bush butter, is, is we just slide it across there like that. And then we work it in. Right? And then on our blades, right here. Just provides that little bit of lubricated resistance and helps you align your knife, okay? 
what other kind of leather? You can use it on, on boot leather, belt leather, just leather period. Um, and it's, it's very, very uh, friendly to whatever leather product you might have. I'm also putting it on the wood sides because these are made out of raw wood. We don't finish these at all. All right, that's, that's another application. Oh, here's one. Here's one that, that you know, if you make pre-made ridge lines, and which you should if you're a bushman that goes out at all, you know, you should be prepared to be able to put a shelter up in an emergency situation. You got your ridge line, right? This is 550 paracord. Uh, and, and what we do is we'll put some bush butter in the palm of our hand, and we will run it all the way across this ridge line. Why am I doing that? Because... I want it to be able to shed water and not hold water. After a while, if you've uh, spent any time out in the bush using ridge lines, if you get caught in a deluge, or you might be in a rainy uh, situation where it's raining all the time, you're going to want to be able to shed water. Now, not only does this help you to shed water, but if you are in a situation where you need to use a, a piece of your cordage, uh, as a fire starter, that bush butter in there is going to help uh, extend that fire as well. You know, so that's a, another application, and not it's not only uh, small pieces of cordage, but there are certain ropes that I actually do the same thing on to help preserve the rope, help to keep it pliable, and to help it to shed water. I don't want it soaking up any type of water. You know, so you can use it on different cordages. Um, I told you that carabiners, you know, carabiners all have a, a hinge on there. And to keep them from this, this happens to be, this is the way that, that I teach everybody to carry their emergency whistle. Uh, and all you do is hook it on the inside or hook it in a way for it to slip down into your uh, backpack or your haversack. Uh, it's out of the way. You know, but you can re easily reach in it and hit it if you have to, right? And, uh, you know, I always get people ask me, why do you have orange uh, on your uh, lanyards? Because if I drop this, I'm going to be able to find it. Now, the whistle is orange, but it's just a general rule, a habit that I have picked up after having lost my primary knife uh, on the forest floor in a very ugly situation. Uh, so, I put it on stuff like that. Um, let's talk about this, this different steel here. All right, this happens to be um, a woodsman spike uh, that you can uh, see that on one of our pages. It's made out of steel. Uh, so, you know, you, you have to be able to keep it protected. And once you do that, you know, I don't care what kind of rain gets on there. You know, it'll wear off eventually, uh, but these Woodsman Spike uh, can be found on woodtrampgear.com. Uh, this one doesn't have the attachment groove here to be able to anchor, but, you know, you use it for hanging your backpacks, and then there's an awl on the other side that you can use it for punching. Uh, but, again, it's not an advertisement for anything. I just want to show you how you can use that bush butter. Now, this happens to be an antique metal ring. Uh, it may have came off of a... Uh, ox harness. Um, it may have came off, you know, off off of a yoke, off a, of, you know, uh, just any type of piece of antique farm gear uh, that they were using. And I teach people if you're if you're out and about at a garage sale, if you're at an auction, um, or <laughs> wherever you're at, you ever see these old antique rings? Pick them up because you throw this in your backpack. You can hang it in your backpack, and it becomes a instant tripod for your campfire to hold your pots, pans, whatever, you know, boil water, you know, but I think we got a video out on how to use that, but I buy these rings all the time. Uh, and this one, as you can see, it's old and it's rusty. And all I do with this stuff is put this bush butter on it, and I'm not putting a lot on at all, you know, I just happen to be moving it, you know, keep an eye on how big this is, all right, we've already used it on a couple things here, all right, and then I just work that in, 
and the rust. Look at that. See that? And then since I've got it on the lanyard here, I may as well just go ahead and put it on the lanyard. All right? Look at that. Bam. You see that there? What it looks like now? All right. Um, let's talk about some blades. This is the uh, Condor, I don't know, I think it's the Greenland Axe, I don't know, but uh, you can see uh, we've got this guy right here, we've got a mask on it, so there's two main pieces of leather that we got to deal with. We have got the cordage that actually uh, holds this together, and then we got the leather sheath. We have got a lanyard here, another orange lanyard, and then we've got the wooden handle itself. And of course, we have got the blade that needs to be addressed, all right? So you notice there is no rust on this axe, and this axe, because we have many here, this axe has been sitting on the shelf for probably about two or three months. There's not a lick of rust on it because it was treated with bush butter. So again, this is how big this is. So let's just start at this end with the lanyard. Just going to rub it on there a little bit. That's all we're doing. See that? And then the wooden handle. Now what I tell everybody, this isn't the first time we've done, I've done this, but on a new axe handle, we sand off whatever came from the builder or came from the manufacturer, if it's a commercial production run type of uh, blade, all right? We put that on there, it didn't take a lot, and you, you couldn't go out and use this axe right now. It'd slip out of your hand. This stuff can be like snot. So you have to let it dry, which takes about, I would say probably an hour for it to dry, and then you buff it out with a soft cloth. Here is some rough leather. This is uh, suede on one side, and then the side that is up against the axe is uh, actually smooth. I'm putting it on the cordage as well. Okay. Then I'm going to just put it on the on the axe head like this along it here. All right. Put it up on the eye. That is an important spot that a lot of people fail to recognize. It needs some. Love, all right? That's how big we're still working with this tiny piece. All right? And just using it on the blade like that. Okay? Then, I've got so much, it, so much of it on my hands, I don't need to use it, use the, the pad itself. I'm just putting it all on this sheath with what's on my hands. Now, what I will do is I will take this and I'll put it on the inside where the blade comes in contact. I want that blade and I, I build up a, I know you can't get a uh, real close look at that, but that, maybe you can. I've got a big lip of it hanging there and the reason I do that is when I put this sheath on the axe, yeah, see the axe just went right across it and it took, can you see the bush butter that's on that axe blade right there? That all happened when I did this, okay? Okay. That dude is protected, man. I don't leave my axes on purpose out in the rain, but after this dries, uh, it gets very, very, very hard. You know, the white film is nothing to be afraid of. If it gets a white film, just buff it out is all you got to do, or touch it with some more bush butter, and it melts it back down again. So that's that's a blade. Now, uh, let's see here. I'll show you. I've got another blade here. This happens to come from Ultimate Survival Tips, and this is the new... MSK1 Primitive. Um, this is the one that uh, 
This is $149 versus the $399 model, but it's got all the same features. But <clears throat> here, here's the bush butter. Let's talk about the knife first. This knife is made out of 1075 steel, and he's got two versions now that are made out of um, stainless steel with some pretty stout coatings on them to prevent rust, right? But you've got that, and then on the original and the two new other new knives that he's got, the scales are micarta. These happen to be wood. You know, he brought the price down. For those that said $399 was too much for a knife, which, you know, not everybody can afford $399. So for $149, you can get the same style of knife with the same features, just a different steel. <clears throat> now, when we have a knife that comes with scales, wooden scales, that can be removed, what I do is I take them off and I put bush butter on the inside of the scales that go up against the steel itself because... Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that underneath those scales, you might have moisture buildup and your poor knife is getting eaten by rust under those scales, all right? So now this knife is completely treated. Got it all over my hands. This is a leather handmade sheath that comes with that knife. Beautiful sheath. See that? Look at that. Now this knife and the sheath is protected. Okay, there's another one there. Go on the inside like that. Nice. Um, I talked about backpack. This happens to be uh, the John Pack. I've had this four or five years maybe. Uh, this is one of the first ones that uh, he ever made, John Langston ever made. And these are being sold on Self-Reliance Outfitters now. I think they, they are the exclusive um, dealer for those now. Um, but because of the fact that uh, it is that old, and, I mean, you can see I've, I've used this a lot. This is probably one of my, my favorite uh, uh, pack. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that. I want to show you some of the seams. Uh, you know that I was recognizing here. You know you got sew points, you got seam points, and these seams on on these packs have got to be protected. You know, and so I go ahead and I put the bush butter on there. I rub it in there. Now again, this is how you use it in the field. But if you happen to be in your shop at home and you are maintaining your gear. You can use a heat gun or blow dryer to heat this up and it'll melt even further down into your canvas. Okay, now I'm starting to lose the grip on here, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you how easy this is. This is very uh, high quality wax canvas and the person that actually makes these uh, now for Self-Reliance Outfitters is a guy whose name is Jay Hercules. Um, I believe he's out of Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, he uses a high quality canvas, high quality wax canvas. He's a great builder. He's one of those guys that I said is, is an artist. He's an artistic builder. Uh, I think Possum, Possum Gear or something like that. I can't remember. Jay, forgive me. Sorry. But I just wanted to show you, you know, there's, there's another way. So we're down to a real small piece now. Um, that's how you use that. You know, bush butter is, is just, I mean, it is probably one of the best things that we have ever, ever put out there, if not the best thing. You know, it even outsells our uh, survival fire kit, our SFK1s, which is one of the best out on the market right now. Uh, I mentioned beards, right? I got bit by a spider right here. Uh, I put that on that spider bite to help the itch go away. Um, dry hands. With this, you won't have dry hands, I guarantee it. You know, chap lips. Yeah. Wish was good for that. If your hair is getting dry, you can take this and rub it into your hands and rub it into your hair. It won't hurt you. You know, 
we used to put a a um, peppermint scent a little bit in there. You know, had a lady one time mention that. Psst. I stopped that right away. I don't want to smell like a candy cane walking through the bush, you know. This, we, the way we make it now, there is no scent to it at all. So, I hope that answered your questions. I mean, this is the longest video I've ever done on bush butter because I don't like tooting our own horn. But it is a good product. Um, it's very useful. And, uh, you know, if you happen to come up with a different way to use this, let us know. You know, put it on the video or drop us uh, an email there. Uh, down there at subscribe at backwoodsbiker.com. Now, the reason I mention that is that if you like, share, and then subscribe to our video channel, we will give you the opportunity to win, you know, free gear uh, every month. Everybody's name is put in there that becomes a subscriber. And we've given a ton of bush butter away. We've given the SFK1s away. We've given away knives, axes. We've given everything away. So, you know, it's beneficial for you uh, to become a subscriber. So, I hope that answered your question, Jason. Uh, I appreciate you reaching out. Wasn't trying to ignore you. Uh, you know, Jason actually sent us three emails. And uh, so that's why we decided to go ahead and take the time and do this for you. So listen, guys, until next time, you guys ride free, you live free, and as always, you be safe out there and stay lubed up.